Well, good morning, everyone. Uh, it's good to see you today. You know, uh, the year 2020 has been uh, just a kind of an unbelievable year, hasn't it? I mean, the pandemic that's gone on, the economic collapse, and now this last week, all the things that have been going on in our city, you know, from the, the injustice that was done to uh, George Floyd, to the rioting that is taking place now in, in our city. And it's easy right now to become really discouraged, get frustrated, uh, to wonder what's going on. And, and there's a lot of things that could be said about what's going on right now. There's a lot of things that could be said about the pandemic, about the economic situation, about the injustices that, that, that some communities in our nation face, about how we need to try to see things through the eyes of other people. I think all those things are, are very important. And, and I could say a lot of things about every single one of those items I just mentioned. But, but a lot of people have already spoken to them, and I don't know if I can really add much to what has been said. Uh, but the reason why I, I, I'm saying all this with you today, honestly, is because I think we really need to, to ask the question of, okay, well, what do we do? If we can identify all these pro problems, great. Let's identify the problems, but what do we actually do? How do we actually fight the pandemic? How do we help those who are struggling with employment? How do we help those people who are facing injustices in this world? How do we help defend those police officers who are good people, who are doing their job, who are, who are seeking justice? How do we do all these things? And, and there's a lot of different answers. But I think sometimes as, as a church, we forget the most important answer. And yes, I believe it is the most important answer. See, too often as a church, we turn our focus to anger or exasperation with the situation we're in. Or we try to figure out all the solutions, but we need to do this, that, and the other thing. But too often we skip the most important thing in the world. We skip turning to God. This is a time in the life of the church where we need to be focusing on, on turning back to God, coming before him in prayer. And that does not mean that we just sit idly by and only pray. We don't do anything else out there. But too often we get so active in trying to change the world that we forget to turn to the one that can bring true and lasting change. We forget to to come before God in prayer. Because the truth of the matter is, brothers and sisters in Christ, people are still going to get sick. Maybe not from the COVID or 19, but from something and they're going to die. The truth of the matter is, people are going to struggle with economic hardships no matter all the solutions we go through. The truth of the matter is, no matter how much we seek to make everything just and equitable in this world, because we live in a broken world, there's going to be times where there is injustice and inequity that comes out. Because we live in a broken world, we are going to be have times where, where somebody who doesn't represent you, you get lumped in with and blame for all the ills of the world. None of those things should happen. None of those things are good. None of those things are right. But it's the reality of living in a broken world. And when we just turn to ourselves and try to solve all the problems by ourselves, those things won't go away. We must turn to Christ because he is the one who can bring healing. He is the one who will supply our daily bread. He is the one who can bring justice to an unjust world. He is the one who can bring healing. So today, we need to turn to Christ. Let's put it this way in the book of 2 Chronicles. This is after, after Solomon has dedicated the temple of God. God tells the people, you know what? You're going to fall away. You're going to mess up. And things, bad things are going to happen because of that sin. But if my people who are called by my name humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. God hears his people. God listens to, uh, to his people. He cares for them. He loves them. And so today, my encouragement for you is this. Let's pray. 
Let's pray for healing for our city. Let's pray for healing uh, between uh, for, for those who have been treated unjustly. Let's pray for healing for those who are being called guilty and haven't done anything wrong. Let's pray for, for healing of our economic situation, for the, the virus that is going on. Let's pray for healing. Turn to God. He's the one who can bring true and lasting healing. I, I'm sorry. I know this may be a little bit rambling. Uh, I, I hope I did not say anything to upset or offend anyone. That was not my goal today. But I think it is important for us to, to remember that, that before anything else and above everything else, we need to turn to God. Please pray with me. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your love to us. We thank you for being with us all the time. And we pray that as your people, we would always turn to you. That you would guide and direct us in how to care for one another. Care for those who, sit, who are sick. Care for those who are struggling. Care for those who, who feel like they're being treated unjustly. Help us to see each other through one another's eyes, and, and most importantly, through your eyes, the eyes of grace and mercy. Bring healing to this land. Bring healing to your people. We pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. God bless you.